They have only five players that have played all 23 games, and one player has played 21, and then it drops down to 19, and then we get down to about 11. So uh, just like Ainsworth, not many players are going to see the floor, and which means both these teams are going to be well-conditioned. It is, Cody. Two teams that are typically five guys are used to playing 95% of the game. Could be a good one out here tonight. Well, if you take a look at it, stats basically about the same. 55 points per game for Axtell. Ainsworth at 61. Axtell, 35 rebounds per game. Ainsworth, 34 uh, turnovers per game. Ainsworth at 13. Axtell at 13. <laughs> it doesn't get much closer than that on paper. It does not. Well, let's take a look at it. Our Buckley Automotive pregame show, Shane, as uh, we were just talking to the folks on the other side, trying to figure out how many games people missed and how things have went for the Ainsworth Bulldogs. Well, Ainsworth Bulldogs have uh, lost seven games this year, and all seven have come to Class C1 teams. Uh, and, of course, Ainsworth out of D1 as well as Axtell. Axtell has won seven in a row. Their loss has come to a 16-7 and seven Eddie Mill Miller uh, Eddieville Miller, uh, Sumner Eddieville Miller, that is. Uh, Elm Creek, who's 15 and 8. Alma, who's 17 and 6. Amherst, 22 and 2. Angeli Litchfield, 19 and 3. So they played some pretty stiff competition themselves. Has Axtell. They have, Cody. I was looking at that yesterday while I was, like, getting paid and at work. I was checking out their record to see how they've been this year. And we're in for a heck of a ball game here tonight. One of the biggest things I saw as I watched a little bit of film, I'm a nut for sports, uh, you can ask my family about that, is I watched Axtell in a, a few of their games. And the games that I watched, they like to press and they like to create turnover and like to score off of those turnovers to get some easy buckets on the other end. And the other thing is, is watch out. They can shoot from beyond the arc and if they get hot, uh, that is big key. You wanna start trading threes for twos, you know, like one coach uh, that's won a title and a runner up here in Andrews said, we make 10 threes, you make 10 twos, we're, st we're up 10. And it, he says, it, it's just a, it's a game that really has been a changer. And from the three-point land, it looks like they shoot the ball very well. Yeah, Cody, I've been watching them warm up here. I didn't go back and look at any film, but just watching them warm up. And I, they do really like to shoot behind the three-point line and are quite handy from there. Well, what a game last night we had. The Andrews Lady Bulldogs had the number two-rated team, now 24-1. Elmwood Murdoch, congratulations them off the state tournament. But Andrews had them shell-shocked a little bit till the final. And it kind of came down to the free-throw line where Andrews was three of ten. And, and uh, Elmwood Murdoch uh, just had enough more free throws. But you look at it here, Shane, 63% for the Dogs at the line as a team, 54% for Axtell at the line. So we get down uh, to the end of this ball game, needing some free throws. That's going to be pretty iffy for both of these teams. Free throws, a lot of games, Cody, come down to free throws. And just like every time we get here, I talk about how important they are. And we'll see how big of a role they play tonight. It is our Buckles Automotive pregame show, folks. Beautiful day today, going to be tomorrow. But by the time Tuesday night and Wednesday hit, we're looking for more snow and uh, winter weather tri type driving conditions. And we want to let you know at Buckles Automotive, they have new powerful Napa batteries on hand now. So make sure your car starts during that cold, snowy day. They also have antifreeze, windshield wiper, and de-icers, starters, starting fluid, anything you need for the cold weather, you name it. Stop in, stock up, stay safe. Buckles Automotive, your Napa store, Main Street in Android, phone 402-387-1171. Should be a dandy, and Shane, I'll just uh, put this out there. Uh, ran into some folks, uh, the Havronics, of course, back in the day when I was coaching uh, basketball and the coaching staff. Back uh, in the day, we had, what, I was on the Jeff Carr staff as well as the Bobby Dishman staff, and uh, ran into the Havronics and saw Eric Havronic down there and had a nice long chat with him. He still owns three uh, track records. He's a track coach at Axtell. His son is a sophomore, it looks like, there, and ran into his brother Sean, also there, and the, uh, then mom, Donna, who was the high school secretary, and the dad worked out where you work out now, but his name's changed out there to John Deere. Back when I worked with him out there when I was in high school, it was... Well, he Crotzels? It was Crotzels back yeah. then. Then he went to O'Neill... And he was, he was there just up until a year or two ago. I believe he retired. 
and it was he stayed there for a few more name changes and retired from Acres. Yeah, glad to have them here. Glad to have everybody from Axtell or Andrews, wherever you're watching this on the video stream from Andrews, Nebraska, Lila McAndrew Gymnasium, also on our radio station, KBRB FM 92.7, and the web, KBRB. Dot net. We'll take a time out, come back, and take a look a little bit more in depth of this D1 matchup here tonight. It is the D1-6 district final for the right to move on to the state basketball championships. At West Plains Bank, we're proud to offer the financial products and services to help you accomplish your life goals. West Plains Bank in Ainsworth and Springview, a better way to bank. Member FDIC, Equal Housing Lender. Ainsworth Feed Processing is proud to buy corn from local farmers because the best corn in the nation makes the best pigs in the nation. And when money stays local, it multiplies time and time again, putting our local area first and feeding the world. Allen Monuments of Ainsworth offer permanent legacies that memorialize the passing of a loved one. The monument you choose can be customized to reflect the life of your departed one. Serving you with dignity, Allen Monuments of Ainsworth. Well, Shane, let's take a little better in-depth look at this one as a state championship berth is on the line. Axtell had been there 11 times, and they have been there in Class C2 back in 2010 as the third place uh, recipient. Uh, they were there in 2016, and they lost in the first round to Walt Hill. Uh, they do have runner-up finishes in 1951, 1979, and 2006 in classes D and D1 for the Ainsworth Bulldogs. Uh, they are trying to get back to the state basketball tournament for the first time also since 2016. Look at that, both teams trying to get back since 2016. You don't see that very often, Shane. It's been a while. Yeah, so 2016, Ainsworth also lost an opening round game to a very solid Amherst basketball club. Ainsworth did pick up a runner up finish in uh, overtime or double overtime, I gotta remember that overtime. one. In overtime, uh, we were there with the call, Shane, and the guy across the way on the radio broadcast wasn't for sure if he thought we could be that deep in, into the tournament, uh, but Ainsworth was, and Ainsworth came out with the runner-up finish in that one in 2014 in overtime, 71-69 loss to Archbishop Burgum. Uh, Andrew did win a class a C1 state title back in 2007. Also in 1938, a runner-up finish. That was a while ago. Yeah, that's been a long time ago. So those these two teams trying to get back to the state tournament, both of them for the first time since 2016. And we'll be back with your starting lineups right after this. You can always brighten your day with a visit to Ainsworth Flowers and Gifts. Unique floral designs available for all occasions, gifts and trimming decor, plus a coffee shop with full menu of your old favorites, new concoctions, and special features. If you have a demand for concrete, call on Ainsworth Ready Mix to get your project started. Residential, commercial, or industrial concrete jobs, they're committed to providing quality products at an affordable price at Ainsworth Ready Mix. Proud supporter of Bulldog Athletics. I am April Good, Associate Broker with Lashley Land and Recreational Brokers, specializing in farm, ranch, and recreational sales, as well as residential property. With my office in Ainsworth, I'm here to help sellers and buyers like you make the most of your move. Three River Communications, serving Ainsworth and the surrounding area with fiber services of internet, local long distance phone service, and high definition cable TV. Three River Communication is a proud supporter of the Ainsworth Bulldogs. Well, let's go ahead and take a look at our starting lineup brought to you by Three River Communication. Axtell Wildcats coming in at 18 and 6 on the season. Head coach Brent Hendricks, Hendricks that is, assisted by Jeff Halverson and Dusty Jura. As we take a look at it in the American quarter, they'll start number three, a six foot senior, Carson Lindau. Lindau is averaging 14 points, two rebounds per basketball game. Number 10 is Keaton Cole, six foot and a senior. Cole comes in averaging seven points, five rebounds a game. Elijah Bergstrom wears number 12. He's a 5'9 junior. Bergstrom averaging 7.5 rebounds a game. Number 15, Ethan Morgan. They're tall guys, 6'5 senior. Morgan is averaging 12 points, 10 rebounds per basketball game. Nine and a half will round it up. Shane, give him a double-double. And number 23, Jacob Halverson, 5'11 and a junior. Halverson averaging 8 points, 7 rebounds per basketball game. 
That's the Axtell Wildcats and our starting lineup brought to you by Three River Communications. They offer ridiculously fast internet speeds at amazing prices. With their new fiber optic network built, your internet, cable TV, and phone service will be unmatched in Ainsworth and the surrounding area. Call 866-569-2666. To get more information on these services, Three River is your local broadband provider. Now for the Ainsworth Bulldogs coming in at 17 and 7 on the year for head coach Jake Nelson, assistant Brian Delmont, and volunteer coach Clint Painter. They will start number five, 5'9", five senior Tragen McNally. He has 1,284 points in his career. Number 11, 5'6", junior, has nothing to do with basketball, but he led all state of Nebraska in sacks this year. Yes, 5'6", and he led all classes in sacks this year on the football field, Jacob Hill. Number 12, Logan Schradel getting the start again here tonight. He's had to step up with the injury to Morgan Kinney. Schradel, 5'11", and a junior. Number 22, 6'5", senior Carter Nelson is three blocks away from 300. He has 1,177 career points, 728 rebounds, and 297 block shots. And number 24, Trey Appelt, 6'4", senior, averaging a double-double, 18 points, 11 rebounds, he has 426 points this season, 954 career points, 832 rebounds for the Bulldogs. And that is your starting lineups brought to you by Three River Communications. No overpriced lawn services, no headaches. Call on Steck Lawn Care in Ainsworth. Grant Steck offers mowing services, landscaping, seasonal cleanup, and more. You can even reserve your mow day and wait for next season now. Call or text 402-760-1808. Frontier Diesel of Ainsworth is your best choice for diesel truck and big rig repairs. Bruce Janet and crew provide long-lasting repair work that stands up to the demands placed on your heavy-duty equipment. Dependable service, repairs done right. Frontier Diesel of Ainsworth. Get your smile on. At Ainsworth Family Dental, Dr. Mackenzie Owen and dental hygienist Lene Hansmeyer, along with their friendly staff, always strive for one common goal, to help their patients achieve and maintain a beautiful, healthy smile. Well, quickly, before we get into the national anthem, we could tell you D17 is uh, going on also, and that is Southern Valley hosting, uh, looks like uh, Dundee County Stratton at Southern Valley taking on Sutton. And in the D18 at Callaway South Loop, that is Callaway Arnold combined. They're the 8C taking on Plainview in the D18. D16 course here in Ainsworth, Ainsworth versus Actel in the 611 matchup. D15 at Howells Dodge, a rematch from a sub district final. Guardian Angel Central Catholic knocked off Howells Dodge the other night. They play again. Uh, coming up, it looks like, on Tuesday. Uh, Ansley Litchfield will take on Cambridge at 5 o'clock in the D13. And McCool Junction versus Riverside uh, coming up today. In the D12, also today, Johnson Brock versus Elmwood Murdoch. And coming up on Monday night, it's North Platte State Pats taking on Overton. So a few games played tonight. Game on Monday, game on Tuesday in Class D1 for the right to move on to the state basketball championships in Lincoln. Have the national anthem coming up, so we need to take a time out here. We're from our fine sportscasters bringing you this basketball game. Whether high school... Ainsworth for your convenience. Give us a call today. 
Everything for your building needs is available from Century Lumber in Ainsworth. Whether you are starting from scratch, remodeling, or just doing a little maintenance, the necessary supplies are waiting for you at Century Lumber on Main Street in Ainsworth. For all of your livestock or grain hauling needs, call on Thad Jones Trucking of Ainsworth. Well-maintained trucks and trailers, skilled, reliable, and experienced drivers. Thad Jones Trucking, phone 402-760-1964. Get the good stuff at Buckles Automotive, your Napa store on Main Street in Ainsworth. We carry a complete line of passenger car and light truck parts, as well as heavy-duty truck parts for the big rigs used on your farm or ranch. Buckles Automotive in Ainsworth, one call, that's all. Your first choice for exceptional care is Rangeland Rehab with locations in Ainsworth and Bassett. Physical therapist Brian Doak, along with professional staff, are trained on many techniques to help improve mobility and decrease pain. For appointments, call 402-371-600. Red and White Market is your local community connection for high-quality food, friendly service, and great prices. Make sure to grab a delicious, piping hot lunch. The deli starts serving at 11.30 weekdays. You can have it to stay or to go from Red and White Market on Highway 20 in Ainsworth. Yours Nomadic by Lindsay Dealer it offers replacement parts for any brand of pivot, installation and training, superior service when you need it. Your local Zomatic by Lindsay Dealer is Ainsworth Electric Motor, located just one mile east of Ainsworth on Highway 20. Call 387. 10, wow, what a crowd on hand here at the MAC. Glad to have you along, Lila McAndrew Gymnasium. Those folks on the video stream were probably going to be just a few seconds ahead on the audio here. Uh, it's standing room only. You're going to have to come over here to the, uh, looks like, uh, Axtell side for a seat. Carter Nelson for Ainsworth. Ethan Morgan. For Axtell to tip it off here. Ainsworth from left to right, Axtell right to left. And here we go. Winner moves on to the state tur tournament. Ainsworth will win the jump ball, and we're going to have a hold and a foul can be called on Axtell right away. Four seconds gone by, Shane. We got a foul. We did. That foul is going to go on Carter Lindau. Going to be the first foul of the game. Yeah, Carson picks up uh, his first foul. Ainsworth inbound. McNally with the basketball. Man-to-man -man defense played here. McNally pull up from eight, got it. Tragan McNally will get the first two for the Ainsworth Bulldogs. They'll take the lead here, two nothing, on their first possession. Axtell looking at Ainsworth man-to-man, -man, trying to get to the cutter underneath. Turnaround jumper by Morgan, block, rebound, could be pulled down by Appelt. Ainsworth looks to go ahead. Get it off to Appelt. He wants a corner three. No good. Rebound off of Axtell. Ainsworth basketball. Boy, we're in for a good one, Cody. This pace is setting up perfect. Boy, and your mic's going to definitely pick up the crowd noise <laughs> on this one. A dandy here. Expected. Ainsworth goes down low to Appelt. Appelt looking for a cutter. Nothing there. Pull up from 10 feet. No good. Nice rebound underneath. Pulled down by Bergstrom. And Axtell will bring it across the timeline here. Cole left side to Lindau for three in the lead. No good. Rebound. Be in. And out of the hands of the Bulldog. Underneath. Shot up and good for Bergstrom on the rebound. That's his second rebound. Great second chance opportunity for Axtell. Here's a three on the way for McNally. No good. Rebound going to be pulled down by Lindau. They like to run it. This ball going to be... Oh, they're going to get Tregan McNally with yeah, the gonna foul. They're going to get him with the foul, just like the game started with the foul. And they're going to say going up for a shot. That's going to be Carson Lindau headed to the line. First free throw of the game. Back and forth we go. Quick pace game. And it is 2-2. 2 to go in the first. Standing room only here. This free throw is up and good. You know, Shane, we mentioned in our pregame show about free throw percentages. You look at it here for... The Wildcats, as I mentioned, they come in about that 40-some percent. Didn't look too shabby there. And that was back-to-back -back free throws. Knocked down for Lindau, his first and second points. Here's that full-court pressure handled here so far by McNally. He'll get past his defender, pull up from seven. It's up and good. McNally leads Andrews with four, and we're knotted up at four apiece. Boy, this could be a track meet. Who's going to have the legs to last the longest here, Shane? Here's a take in, get Appelt in the air, shot blocked out of bounds. 
Like we said in the pregame, though, neither of these teams sub much, so both teams should be pretty well ready to run for the entire time. Axtell underneath their own hoop here. Driving in, shot up, no good. Rebound, put back is good, though. Moving Carter Nelson out of the way with his body. Nice shot by Halverson. As we talk about, you get the foul calls up on the top, but usually don't down low, and good job there by Halverson. Angels gets it down to Nelson. Nelson throws it into the backboard, and it's going to be a turnover. That's going to be the first turnover of the game. Carter kind of trapped down there behind the backboard and went to pass it out. Well, if it hits below the hoop, that's legal. If it hits behind the hoop, it is not. Yep. I think instead of having an argument between the officials and a jump ball, which would have gave it to Axtell anyway, they go ahead and say it was off of the backboard, behind the hoop. Get it down low to Halverson. His shot blocked by Nelson. Rebound pulled down by Nelson. And then he's knocked down, no call. And a ball back into the hands of Axtell. Shot up and good, up and good for Lindau's fourth point of the game. Axtell leads 8-4, to 5.26 to go here as in the first fast, quarter. As fast as this is going, i tell you what, if you're a guy wearing the stripes, you can't turn your back at all <laughs> on what's happening. There's a foul. That's going to go on Keaton yeah. Cole, going to be his first foul, the second team foul. I think it happened last time too, Shane. Glad to have you along here on FM 92.7, the web, kbrb.net. And on the school's YouTube channel, 8-4, Axtell, after they trailed 2-0. Anthers really looking for things underneath, haven't found anything yet. Body on the floor for Axtell. Here's McNally with the basketball. He looks to drive in. He's going to be fouled in another foul. That's going to be two quick ones on Cole. Avronik's going to check no, in here. This one they put on Morgan, going to be his first foul. Kaysen Havronic, six foot and a sophomore. I don't know how in. they did that. There, there was nobody near him there. That should have been on number 10. I thought so. Yeah, number 15 was nowhere near. That shot up and good on the inbound play for Appelt. And I'm just saying what we see up here. We're opposite of the camera, so those video folks know here. 8-6. Axtell by two here. Here's a shot up, no good, and Jacob Held rolls an ankle and picks up the foul. That'll be Held's first foul, the second team foul on Ainsworth. How about the de uh, defense? Jacob Halverson is playing on Carter Nelson down low as uh, Halverson checks into 5'11", Nelson at 6'5". We're going to have our third free throws of the basketball game here for Axtell. This one is no good. Off the hands of Elijah Bergstrom. Ainsworth had not made it to the free throw line yet. Another one up and coming here for Bergstrom. And it is in and out, no good. Rebound going to go in the hands of McNally. 0 for 2 at the line there. The team is 2 of 4 now. Underneath it goes to Nelson. He's going to be held in a foul. This foul is going to go on Halverson. Going to be his first. How ironic is that? We just talked about the defense that he was playing on Nelson and Ainsworth went right down there to Nelson. And that's one with the defense he's playing on him. I think if they go to Nelson a lot, they could get him in foul trouble. Four fouls already on Axtell, two on Ainsworth here. Free throws at five. Appelt looks to drive in, kicks it to Held from 10, buries it. Jacob Held ties it as Ainsworth on an eight, uh, on a four nothing run and ties it at eight apiece. 420 to go in the first quarter. Axtell looks on the give and go. Oh, oh, nice, beautiful take. Getting past the defense, Lindau for his sixth point of the game. I think McNally was looking for some help, but there was zero help there. Pass down low over the head of Nelson. To be the third turnover on the Bulldogs. Wildcats have not turned the ball over yet. 4.02 to go in the first. Axtell up 10 8. Winner goes to Lincoln. Southwest Conference girls send Minden as well as Broken Bow. Ains were just short against Elmwood Murdoch last night. Here's a deep three off the hands of Lindau. No good. Rebound Appel. 3.43 to go in the first. Again, we may be ahead on the video stream. Here's McNally. Three on the way. It's a West Plains Bank three-pointer. 
McNally has seven, and Ainsworth regains the lead 11-10. Boy, this has all the making of a first round of a state championship game, doesn't it, Shane? It does. That's why it's a district final. Going to get it down low to Morgan. He'll kick it out, drive it in. Looks like Bergstrom. Ball batted, saved by Halverson. Looking for some help. Bergstrom, drive in. Shot, no good, but the rebound is going to go clear out to the top for a three for Lindau. Buries it. No, that's, that's not Lindau. Let's go that's Havronic. That's Havronic off the bench. Jason Havronic with the three. His dad has records up on the board over here on the track board. Three on the way. No good, but a foul shooting three goes Appelt. That's going to be the second foul now on Ethan Morgan. It is. Appelt, first Bulldog to get to the free throw line tonight. Wow, it's loud in here. 13-11, back and forth we go. 2.54 to go in the first quarter. Appelt will get three. You see Brent Sint, 6-2 and a senior getting ready to check in. Andrews has yet to sub. That free throw by Appelt is no good. Still got three, two free throws yet. <laughs> Coach Heinrich says, yep, I saw that. Sorry about that. This one by Appelt is up and good. He has his third point of the game. You're going to see Morgan come to the bench as he picked up that second foul. And a chance to tie it here at 13 apiece with 2.54 to go. Appelt's free throw is good. He had four points, and we're knotted up here at 13 apiece. 2.50 to go here in our first quarter. Trying to run a set play here for Lindau. He'll shoot it deep if he gets a chance to. They're going to get into the hands of Halverson. He looks to drive in. Shut down. Turn around jumper. No good. Rebound. Spot four. Loose. Who's going to come out of there with it? We're going to get a timeout called by Axtell. Brent good Sint hustle. Is going to Get that rebound credited Great to him. Great hustle. Looked like it was going to be Andrews basketball. Simp right off the bench gets a rebound, and it's a 30 second timeout. We'll take one with them. What a game we have with the D16 final at Lila McAndrew Gymnasium. It is Ainsworth 13, Axtell 13, 228 to go in the first. Locally owned and operated since 1953, Nelson Furniture on Main Street in Valentine, where more than the price is right. You'll find a great selection, personal service, and all the elements to make your house a home. Delivery available and financing available to qualified buyers from Nelson Furniture. What a crowd on hand. Haven't had this type of a crowd for a while. For one game here, Cody, but this game means everything to both, All these kids on the bench. Both teams trying to get back to Lincoln, Nebraska for the first time since 2016. Both lost that year in the opening round game. Axel underneath. Kick it clear up top to Bergstrom. In the corner, here's Havronic. Get it back into the hands of Bergstrom. Made with man-to-man -man defense here. Lindau trying to work. Now trying to get a man set up, looking for a screen. Kicks it out to Carson. Carson looks to drive. And there's going to be... Going to get a blocking like a hook. foul. From our side, it looked like he hooked him. This one's going to go on Hill. That'll yeah. be his second. His second. The third team foul. Yeah, and Coach Nelson just said that to the official. Said, hey, that was an offensive hook. And the official shook his head. I saw the bump first. This shot can be blocked by Nelson. Rebound by Schradel. Quickly head to Nelson. Nelson kicks it out. The ball's going to be loose and turned over. Hit the official. Havronic shot. Good for a layup on the Ainsworth turnover, Shane. The pressure from Axtell creating another turnover. That was one. It was Carter Nelson on four. Just tried to get the ball to McNally. Axtell zero turnovers. Ainsworth five. 15-13. Axtell. Here's McNally from the free throw line. Buries another shot. There's not many shooting guards that could shoot like him. He only stands at 5'9". He's going to go play safety or defensive back at Shadron State College, play football instead of basketball. But he is a dandy. This ball going to be stolen away by Schradel. He picks up the ball, gets it off to McNally. He wants a straightaway three. No good. Rebound. Appelt. His shot off the glass. No good. Rebound. Loose. And the ball is going to be off of... Axel. Good hustle. 
Wow. Great see hustle. Scott Fernandez check into the game here. Give Held a little break because he has them two fouls. Make sure he doesn't pick up a third before the end of the first quarter. Minute 12 to go in the first 15 apiece. Ains are trying to regain the lead. Gets it into the hands of Nelson. Now to Fernandez, to McNally. McNally looks to drive in. Pulls up off the glass, no good. Rebound pulled down by Axtell Bergstrom. He's gonna run right into it, and a foul gonna be called. Logan Stradle uh, Logan gonna Stradle. pick up his first, and that's gonna be the yeah, 14th he gets down there. He gets down there, he could take the charge. Yeah, he just needs to yeah. plant his feet and stay there. We're gonna have Bergstrom back to the line for two. He went 0 for two. Five fouls in the first quarter on Axtell, four on Ainsworth. Another free throw again for Axtell. This one is up and good for Bergstrom. He has three points. You know, sometimes it just feels like that. You get a game like that where one team just shoots a ton more free throws than the other just because of the aggressive take to the hoop. Yep. Another one up and good, and it's a two-point lead once again for Axtell on Bergstrom, fourth point of the game. He's two for four. 59.8 seconds to go here in the first quarter. Two-point lead in a high-scoring game. McNally gets it to Appel. Turn around. Shot up, no good. He almost didn't follow his shot. Now gets it out to Nelson. He looks. He'll pull up from 10. No good. Rebound put back. No good by Appel. Near. Rebound pulled down by Halverson. And Axtell with 36 seconds. We'll try to extend their lead here. Lindau with the basketball. Still dribbling up top here. Now get off to Bergstrom with 14 seconds. Bergstrom looks to take it in. His shot up off glass, no good. Rebound, Appel. He looks at the clock with six to go to McNally. He'll fire a three, no good. Rebound, loose. And that's gonna be the end of the first quarter. Tri-County Bank scoreboard, it is Axtell 17, Ainsworth 15, back in a moment. This is Dane Sears, Ag Loan Officer with Homestead Bank. The Ag Bankers at Homestead Bank understand the risks and rewards of farming and ranching. We can help you look ahead and plan for a season of success. Stop in or call to visit with one of our experienced bankers today to start your journey. Homestead Bank, member FDIC. Quality care for quality cattle. At RK Cattle Company of Long Pine, they have the facilities and equipment to meet the ever-changing needs of the cattle feeding industry. Call Brian Ortner to learn more at RK Cattle Company, phone 402-273-4424. Good first quarter, Shane, here. Axel 17-15, all about defense and rebounding. You can see why this team... Uh, on paper, out-rebounds any team, basically in Class D1 with 35 a game. Yeah, Cody, and right now, both teams are knotted up on rebounds, nine apiece. And it looks like it may be even more because of the offensive uh, attempts put back by Axtell. 17-15, Axtell by two here. Winner again goes to Lincoln, Nebraska. Couple players have a couple fouls though, Shane, as we look at a little bit of foul trouble to start the second quarter. Ainsworth, Jacob Held has two for Axtell. Ethan Morgan has two. Now for Axtell, <clears throat> Ethan Morgan is not gonna start the second quarter, but Jacob Held will for Ainsworth. All right, and we'll put eight minutes on the clock, reset the fouls here, and we'll get into our second quarter of play. Knew this was gonna be a dandy coming in, Shane. Tell you what, it's almost like you need a Official on every corner and one in the <laughs> middle. It just is so fast. You you blink, you turn around, you miss something. We have a great angle up here. I love how we are perched up here. Opposite side of the camera here. And Axtell will have it at the top of the key. Go right side, set it up. Lynn down with a little pump fake. Here's now a three on the way. No good. Rebound into the hands of Ooh, Morgan, Morgan. out there. His shot, take no good. Rebound, Appelt had it. Oh, he wow. falls down, no travel call. And Ainsworth will get it, Shane. I think it might have been because of the contact. They, contact, they didn't call it travel, but. Yeah, but still, you fall down. Exactly. Here's McNally for another three. And, ooh, thought he had drew a lot of contact there, too. No call. And a rebound pulled down by Axtell. That was on our side, Shane. I thought I saw the official had his hand closed, and he called it because I couldn't hear the whistle. 
good ball. Handley's killed by Cole. Ball gonna be stolen away by Ainsworth. Only the second turnover on Axtell in this game. Nelson needs some help, gets it to McNally. McNally tries to get his guy in the air, misses the shot, good defense there by Havronic. And Havronic with the rebound. Havronic, two rebounds, five points here in this game off the bench. Andrew trying to go for a steal here. And there we're gonna have the ball turned over. That'll be the third turnover on Axtell. Ainsworth with five. We've played a minute and 11. Axtell and Ainsworth have not scored here in the second quarter. Gonna call a set play here. Just a full court man to man for Axtell. Ainsworth crossed the timeline, get it to Appel, get it to McNally. McNally takes it up, his shot, no good, oh, no man. call again. We've seen a lot of contact in the first quarter by both teams called. Now, kind of letting them both play. Foul pass, nice play underneath. Whoa! No foul there. Yeah, I'm with, look at it, yeah, look, yeah. you can see the crowd. Carter literally landed on him wow. and blocked it. That should have been. <laughs> I just mentioned that, a lot of contact and they haven't called any fouls, yeah. whoa. There's no doubt about it there. Axel got yes. the ball. Le play to what they let you, and it's changed. We're from not one-sided, folks, I'll tell you that. Whoa. 17-15, 623 to go in the second. Low scoring second after high scoring first. Pass down low. And that's gonna be a kick ball by Held. Good call there. Well, it's just like weird. It is. We had what, nine or ten fouls called in the first quarter now. Zero. Nine fouls in the first quarter. Nine fouls, okay, five and four. Lindau for three, looks good from our angle, and it is. We had a great look at that, and Carson knocks down his ninth point of the game, and the biggest lead of the game for Axtell at five, 20 to 15. Andrew's gonna have to figure out how to get some other guys to score the ball here. Pass down low to Nelson, looking for the cutter. And he's gonna, there's gonna be a foul, and there's not much you can do on that. That's foul going to be on Halverson. That'll be his second foul. And that's about the only thing that Andrew can maybe hope for is get Axtell in a lot of foul trouble here. Cradle with the basketball. Gets it off to Nelson at top key. Carter held scoreless here in the first half. Looking for a screen. Looks with the spin move. Great defense. Now turn around from eight. No good. Rebound underneath. Pulled down by Morgan. Lindau, ball's loose, stolen away. Nelson with it. And no, he's gonna be hammered hard. That and might be an intentional. That's gonna be three on Halverson. Ooh, I don't like the reaction of the crowd though. I don't either. Uh, that's it's gonna send Nelson wow. to the line for two. I'm all about basketball, but yeah, but when you take somebody for out, clapping somebody getting taken cheer. out, I don't like that. 5.35 to go in the second, 20 to 15. Axtell biggest lead. It's trimmed to four now at 20 to 16. And, and we're opposite of the camera. We got Elijah Bergstrom checks back in for Halverson as he picked up that third foul. And we're just a little bit ahead on the video stream as Morgan Kenny gonna check in for the first time at about seven games due to an injury. His free throw for Nelson is good. Carter gets his first. And second free throws. Kenny comes in for Stradle, who has played a big role coming in for Morgan since he's been hurt. 20 to 17. The Ainsworth crowd is happy to see him back on the court. 5.32 to go in the second quarter. We knew this was going to be a dandy. Love high school basketball this time of the year. Axtell. Have Ronick had it poked out of his hands, regain. Coach Heinrich wants a set play here. Jacob Held got put, yeah. <laughs> Here's a, a three on the way, Bertram, no good, yeah. Held got away with one there, rebound pulled down by the dog. With 5.05 to go. Here's a pass down low to Appelt. Appelt shut down by Bergstrom. Pass down to Jacob Held, reverse layup. Oh, nice move by Held, nice look by Appel to get it to him. 20 to 19, Andrews on a little four nothing run and a timeout gonna be called by coach Brent Heinrichs. We'll take one with them, 446 going the second, 20 to 19, Axtell by one. On Flynn Law Office, PCLLO in Ainsworth, 382-3420.
When you need legal assistance, whether for personal, business, or farm and ranch concerns, call Todd Flynn Law Office, PCLLO at 402-382-3420 in Ainsworth. Great yields start with the right seed. If you're looking for more when you buy seed, if world-class genetics and a seed rep with an unwavering commitment is important to you, go with Sherm Gucci and Hogemeyer. The right seed, 402-760-2172. All right, we're back here. Second quarter, Axtell by one, 20 to 19. Andrew with a little four nothing run. Axtell has used two 30 second timeouts. They have three full timeouts left. Andrew has not used one yet. Axtell trying to extend the lead. And again, their biggest lead has been five at 20 to 15 to start this second quarter. We'll have keys to the second half coming up for you at halftime. Morgan Kenny playing defense on Lindau. And he's gonna dribble to the corner. Pass off, have a guy open. Miss Bergstrom on the short corner there, Shane. They did, had him wide open there. And here's a shot up, lost the handle of it. Lindell, and it'll be turnover. Turnover Axtell. number five. Axtell had one turnover in the first quarter, have four here in the first half of the second quarter. And Andrews has a chance to take the lead, Shane, for the first time since 2-0. Nelson looks. Nobody there to cut. Here's to Nelson, looking for a cutter. Hits McNally, gets his guy up in the air, off the glass, up and good. McNally has 11 first half points, and Andrews on a six nothing run, has their first lead since two nothing. 21-20, go down low, Lindau. Ball knocked out of his hands, kicks it to Bergstrom. Out to have Ronick who's played a solid game. Block shot, Nelson, that's his third. He's got 300 in his career. That's a lot of blocks. That is a lot of block shots. Clock down to 337 to go in the second quarter, 21-20. Ainsworth, open for three, the big man, Morgan. No good, rebound by Nelson. Now here comes Morgan Kinney with the basketball. He gets it to Appel. Underneath the held, he'll try a 10-footer, no good. Rebound in the hands of Havronica. Quickly underneath, Lindau got loose, missed the reverse layup. Oh. And then we're going to have an offensive foul on Appel. Yep. I didn't see I totally see it. agree with that. He lowered the shoulder. Yep. yep, and that's what the Jake Coach Nelson said that, as well as official. That's going to be Appel. Appel's first foul, the sixth turnover. And on no the need to lower the shoulder all the way on that side of the floor. No, he's 90 feet away from the basket. How about that? Case and Havron got the bench. Has played well. Five points off the bench for the Wildcats. And three rebounds. We do see Brant Maudlin, 6'2", junior, check into the game. Ball going to be batted, nearly stolen away by the Dogs. Now here is from the free throw line, Morgan up and good. And Axtell regains the lead, 22-21, with 3.05 to go here in the half. McNally to Nelson. Looking to go the other side with it. Here's a screen. McNally looking down low. Skips it up top. Good ball movement. Travel by Morgan Kenny. Yep. Shuffled his feet. Got some happy feet going on there. We're going to see Stradle check back in for Kenny. Two forty-five to go in the second. One-point ball game. Shane really low scoring. Second quarter. Ainsworth has six, five for Axtell. Excuse me. Ainsworth, yeah, ball nearly stolen away. Saved there by Lindau. Five for Axtell. Six for Ainsworth. This is a three on the oh, way. It's good. Deep three for Lindau. I came in mentioning in our pregame they'll knock down the three on you if you don't guard them, and they have a lead of 25-21. They're on a 5 nothing run and nearly going away on a bad pass by the Bulldogs. Bulldogs want Nelson to go down and play the post. I think he probably needs to if yeah. get Ainsworth back in this ball game here. Yeah, has a low post, not high post. Here's Appel driving in. He's going to be fouled underneath. Yep, that's a blocking foul. Axtell doesn't like it, but that one's going to go on Bergstrom. Going to be his first. Going to send Appel to the line for two. He is two of three so far tonight. 
Oh, they're not shooting. Nope. Called it on the floor. I don't even guess anymore. <laughs> one says we're shooting, one says we're not. We're not shooting. It's all batted. Out of play, good defense there by Bergstrom. Bergstrom, 5'9 and a junior. Athletic group of kids here. Andrew gets it to McNally to Nelson. Again, he's clear up top. Oh, <laughs> oh McNally, or er, that was Appel. Appel just gets shoved in the back. No call. Rebound pulled down by Mudlin. Oh, Andrew playing kind of lazy <laughs> defense here. Shot blocked by Appel. Now we're going to have a body foul on Mudlin. Knocking down Logan Schradle. Yeah, he just kind of tackled him in the process That's of pulling the fouls. rebound. That'll be Maudlin's first foul. Four fouls on Axtell, one on Ainsworth. Minute 50 to go here in the second. McNally crossed the timeline with it. To Held, now to Schradel. Dragging it to Nelson, ball stolen away. And then it's yep. gonna be off Axtell. Adrick get the ball with a minute 37 to go. Nelson wants a three left side, no good. Rebound pulled down by Bergstrom. Ball stolen away by Appel. Now he'll get off to Held. Underneath the Nelson, shot up and good. Carter Nelson's first two from the field, he has four. It's Axtell up by three, two. 25-23, how about another three, Lindau. Oh, another He's on D3. fire. Give him 15 in the game for Carson. And it's back to a five point lead. 28-23, that matches the biggest lead of the game here for Axtell. Cradle, we'll get it to McNally, he'll fire a three. He answered back with the West Plains Bank three. He has 14 in the game. Those two are having a whale of a game, and it's a two-point game. 28-26, Axtell by two. First from driving in, bounce pass, shot blocked by Nelson. No, it is not blocked by Nelson. That time it's they're, they're going to call Nelson. him with a foul. It's going to send Maudlin to the line for the first time tonight. Two free throws coming up here for Maudlin off the bench. This one no good. Grant, a 6'2 junior. Trying to extend it to a three-point lead here. This one, no good. Rebound in the hands of Jacob Held. 35 seconds to go in the first half. Carter Nelson has the ball. Has his dribble left. Gets it to Held. Or to McNally. He looks to drive and gets the seal. Reverse layup. We're tied at 28 all. Good seal by Appelt. It's McNally now has 16. With 16 seconds to go, we're tied up at 28 apiece. What a D1 basketball district final we have here from McAndrew Gymnasium. Ball's loose. Five seconds to go. Pick back up and saved here by Morgan. Lindau just going to huck up a prayer. No good. And that's going to be the end of the half. 28 28 on our Tri County Bank scoreboard here on KBRB. Joe Salvage of Ainsworth, proud supporter of Bulldog Athletics, has new steel and windbreak steel available, tractors and vehicles, and pays competitive prices for scrap iron vehicles and farm machinery. Call Tom at 402-382-8004 or Willie at 402-382-8784. For independent grain marketing, contact Pride Grain, located on Highway 20 between Long Pine and Bassett. They have a variety of marketing tools available to meet your individual market plan. Visit with Brad Wilkins at Pride Grain. They're proud to be a supporter of local athletics. Tires you deserve from people you can trust. At Brown County Tire, their sales and service teams go above and beyond to help you with your tire needs. For complete tire service and oil changes, call them Brown County Tire in Ainsworth. Phone 402-387-0203. Palmer Law Group, LLC, Attorney at Law in Ainsworth is at their new location, 121 East 2nd Street here in Ainsworth. They focus on you, the client, with complete legal services and with reasonable fees. 
Rob Palmer of Palmer Law Group, LLC, a member of the KBRB Sportscasters Club. Local news personalized with pictures. As it happens, that's the Ainsworth Star Journal, hot off the press each Tuesday. The Ainsworth Star Journal offers a full line of printing services, and you can find them on the web. That's the Ainsworth Star Journal, located on an East Highway 20 in Ainsworth. Before you head out to your next destination, fuel up at Yogi's Place, Highway 20 in Ainsworth. And while in, make sure to fuel your body up with select sandwiches, snacks, candies, and beverages. They also have gift cards, too. Yogi's Place, Highway 20 in Ainsworth, is open Monday through Saturday. The Mundhank Agency has been providing quality insurance protection to area individuals, families, and businesses for over 60 years. For quality coverage and fair rates, visit your trusted choice agent of the Sandhills, the Mundhank Agency in Ainsworth. Buckley Steel Incorporated of Ainsworth. Not only do they offer complete metal building construction for your every need, they also supply your crane needs. With their 28-ton crane that can reach 152 feet with just a 15-minute setup. That's Buckley Steel of Ainsworth. Think of the Bulldogs every time you swipe your card with Union Bank and Trust Bulldog Debit Card. It's a perfect way to show off your Bulldog pride wherever you use your card, at home or away. Union Bank and Trust, you belong here, member FDIC. Go ahead and improve with Tim's Construction of Ainsworth additions, kitchens, bathrooms, roofing, drywall, window replacement, siding, even custom-built homes start to finish. Call Tim's Construction of Ainsworth for a free, no-obligation quote at 402-760-0162. Rural health care from Rural Roots. Better health care for your family from clinical, obstetrical, emergency room to home care. Greater Sand Hills Family Health Care with convenient locations in Bassett, Stewart, and Atkinson. Well, back here on KBRB Angel with Nebraska, we take a look at our second half stats, uh, our first half stats, excuse me, Shane. Shane right. Kinnick has that brought to you by the Tri-County Banks. All right, Cody, we have a heck of a ball game here going on in the MAC on a Saturday night. Ainsworth had eight turnovers in the first half. Axtell with seven. Rebounding wise, you don't see this often. Ainsworth is losing the rebounding battle. Ainsworth with 14, 17 for the Wildcats. The Wildcats do go four of eight from the charity stripe. They got there a little more than the Bulldogs, but the Ainsworth made just as many. They go four of five. Down the list, I have Carson Lindau. Give him 15 points. He goes two of two from the line, one rebound. Keaton Cole, one rebound. Case and Havronic off the bench, five points, three rebounds. Elijah Bergstrom, give him four points. He goes two of four from the line, four rebounds. Brant Maudlin comes off the bench, goes 0 for two from the line, one rebound. Ethan Morgan, two points, two rebounds. Jacob Halverson, two points, four rebounds. And Brent Sent off the bench with a rebound. For Ainsworth, we got McNally, 16 points, two rebounds. Jacob Held, four points, one rebound. Logan Stradle, one rebound. Carter Nelson, four points. He goes two of two from the line, two rebounds. Trey Appelt, give him four points. He goes two of three from the line, eight rebounds. For foul trouble, you got, for Axtell, you got three on Halverson, two on Morgan. One apiece for Lindau, Cole, Bergstrom, Maudlin. For the Bulldogs, you have two on Held, then one apiece for McNally, Stradle, Nelson, and Appelt. All right, Shane, at the end of the first quarter it was 17-15 Axtell. Ainsworth outscores Axtell 13-11 in the second tied up at 28 apiece. Axtell 6 of 19 from twos for 32 percent. 4 of 10 for threes for 40 percent and 4 of 8 from the free throw line 50 percent. 10 of 29 for Axtell. Ainsworth will shoot one shot less. They are 9 of 20 from twos for 45 percent. 2 of 8 for threes for 25 percent and 4 of 5 at the free throw line for 80%. At the half, 28-28, Ainsworth and Axtell, D-1-6, district final from Ainsworth, Nebraska. Keys the second half coming up with Greg Kinsey in just a moment. Nebraska beef, it's what's for dinner. Miles Feedlot, Mark and Haley Miles are proud to support Ainsworth Community School students moving forward in academics, athletics, fine arts, and organizations. Go Ainsworth Auto Parts Carquest Store, East Highway 20 in Ainsworth. Great people, great products, great prices. Country Fabrics and Crafts of Valentine specialize in baby lock and simplicity sewing machines and sergers. For fabrics, notions, thread, yarn, zippers, trim, and patterns, 
Head to Country Fabrics and Crafts in Valentine. Now the boss, Greg Kinja, going to join us here. Uh, treated to a dandy here. Quarter, kind of a different game in the first quarter, the second quarter. Uh, they let them play in the second quarter a lot more than they did in the first. Uh, rebounding wise, basically tied up. What are you seeing here in keys of the second half? First of all, for Axtell on the road. Well, I really like what Coach Heinrichs did, switching to the 1-3-1. One, one. Obviously, he was getting into some major foul trouble, especially in the post, staying in the man-to-man. -man. So I would, I would bet unless Axtell falls behind substantially that you'll see them stay in that 1-3-1 one, one and try to keep their posts out of foul trouble. First quarter, most forcing those fouls, and then I thought they went away from that a little bit in the second quarter. Now the, the defense changed. It took Ainsworth a few possessions to adjust to that, but I liked what I saw in the last couple possessions against the 1-3-1 attacking more from the baseline. So I'd like to see Ainsworth post Carter up. If they stay in the 1-3 run, either post him up in the high post, let him see over everyone and have some baseline cutters. You're going to put that guy underneath in a real bind if you've got the ability to have two guys cutting with a Carter probably drawing a double team in the high post if you throw it to him there in that against that 1-3-1 one, one. and and for Ainsworth continue to rebound you know they've given up a few offensive rebounds and Axtell's taken advantage you know they've they're they're undersized inside with the exception of Ethan Morgan but uh, they're they're battling they really are battling inside so yeah I like that where you talk about d defend the three especially on Lindau we, we know that uh, any one of the guys from Max Hill can uh, knock it down talk about uh, maybe a little bit of bench points we've seen coming in off the bench case and Havronic five points he had a three and a two uh, kind of helping uh, the uh, Axel Wildcats off the bench to have this one tied up at 28 apiece. Yeah, gave them some big minutes. Uh, you know, Keaton Cole got into some foul trouble. Of course, uh, Halverson picked up his third with like 5.35 to go in the second. So so getting those uh, those bench points were crucial there for Axtell to uh, kind of build a little bit of a lead. Now Ainsworth got back and got it tied up. For Ainsworth, I'd like to see them as your key to the second half really focus on getting the ball into the post because that has been a real problem for Axtell defensively. And you know, the best way to play defense is to knock out your opponent's best offensive players. So if right. you can you can take their two or three starters out that they rely on inside and, and make some of the younger kids come in, that's typically a recipe for success. So well, we talk about, good first half. Yeah, we talked about uh, coming down to the end of the game. Free throws, 54% of the team for Axtell. Andrews, 63%. Andrews went 80 in the first half, 50% for Axtell. Yeah, the Ainsworth shot the ball pretty well at the free throw line. And, uh, you know, Tragen really was hot to start and then heated up again at the end of that end of that second after a little bit of a cold stretch. So, yeah, looking forward to the second half. I'm going to go back and be a fan. All right, thanks, Greg. Greg Kinsey giving us the keys of the second half. Brought to you by Ainsworth Motors. If you're feeling a little power hungry, check out the inventory lineup today. Your best in the West Ford store. Ainsworth Motors located East Highway 20. Ainsworth, what a great lineup they have right now. A brand new and previously owned cars, trucks, SUVs, and crossovers. They're also your authorized area dealer for Arians mowers and Chisholm Trail bail beds. Financing city of options always available to qualified buyers at Ainsworth Motors. Come see why the difference is the dealer. Let's get ready to head into our third quarter of play. And Ainsworth will have the basketball, Shane, to try to take the lead back here. It's been a couple of nice runs by Axtell. The biggest lead for either team has been Axtell twice at five. Ainsworth had a 2-0 lead, and that has been their biggest lead. And we see Axtell, instead of a man-to-man, -man, going to come out here in a 1-3-1 one, one zone against the Bulldogs and see what Ainsworth, see what Ainsworth does here. Go left side to Hell, down to Appel. His shot up off the glass, and good. They work it down low right off the get-go. And Ainsworth will regain the lead by their biggest margin here. Should be 30 to 28. Scoreboard's off, folks, if you see that quickly inside. Shot up, no good. Rebound, put back high off the glass, no good. Rebound pulled down by Appel. And now Ainsworth looking for their biggest lead of the game. Looking for maybe a trap in the corner if they can. Get it to Nelson. Nelson, two held. Held, reverse layup, blocked by the hoop. And then it's... Going to be knocked out of bounds by Bergstrom, I think. Yep. I think, I think Held actually, his shot hit the back of the hoop, but it was blocked into the back of the hoop. Yes. Adrith gets the basketball up to 30 to 28. This one going to be batted out of bounds. This one batted out of bounds. Quick hands by Halverson. Very quick. 
as I said, I watched film. I saw how these guys like to create turnovers. They did a good job in the first half, eight on the Bulldog. And then late, seven turnovers by Axtell. Held with the basketball to McNally. Thought about the three, won't take it. Now pull up from 10. No good. Rebound, five for it. We're going to have a jump ball, and it will be Axtell basketball. That's Off the jump ball, good hustle in there. Half Helton Lindau getting in there, tying it up. Yeah, Jacob Held gripping that or one. Hill, not half Helton, my bad. What a game. Love games like this, Shane. Had a good one last night. Tell him when Murdoch pulled away from the Ainsworth girls. In that district final, Ainsworth girls season ends. And one of these teams will see their season end here tonight. Ooh. Bertram just took an elbow right to the face. There's a shot up, no good. Rebound. Hustle for it, and it's over and back. It's going to be touched. Oh. I think that was off of Jacob Held. I think so, too. They are going to say it was off of Minden. So that's going to give them a turnover and give Bergstrom a rebound. It I wasn't guess. off the rebound. Okay, official says so it was, was a tip by, by Axtell. By Axtell. I thought that might have been Held. Jacob with the basketball, hands it off. Down low they go to Nelson. Nelson looks to McNally, a little pump fake and drive. Gets it to Nelson, he'll pull up from 10. Hangs on the rim, oh. won't go, rebound. Jacob Held, gets it back to Nelson. Underneath to McNally, gets his guy in there. Block shot, big block in there by Morgan. And Ainsworth has to reset. Appel corner three, no good. Rebound, pulled down by Cole. Quickly ahead, Lindau. Once he gets across half court, I think he's probably got the green light, Shane. I think he does. I'd sure give it to him from what I've seen. Great ball handling skills here by him. Tough shot, and it oh, goes. What a take. Hand. I have him with 17 in the game. Leads all scorers, and we're knotted up at 30 apiece. What a take by Carson Lindau. Ainsworth looking for some offense. McNally for a three. Buries a West Plains Bank three. He now leads all scorers with 19. How about these two guards? Oh. Putting on a show at the MAC. Lila McAndrew Gymnasium, Ainsworth, Nebraska. Ainsworth has their biggest lead of the game at three, 33-30. Here's a step back three for Morgan, no good. Rebound, Schradle. And now Ainsworth looking to extend it a little bit more. No lead is safe at this time of the year. I don't care what lead it may be. Nelson looking out to McNally, looking for a screen. He'll pull up for a two, foot on the line. No good, great box out by Elijah Bergstrom. 5'9", just a great box out. 5'9", he's got six this rebounds. This one can be There's tipped out of bounds why. by the Bulldogs. This guy over there in the front row got a little scared. There's people in this gymnasium that I've never seen before. <laughs> That's what you like to see in high school basketball is fans coming out watching it. Morgan, nice move, takes it in. And he is going to be fouled. Yep. Now, he was not going up. No. That's going to go on Hill. It's going to be his third foul. Yep. Going to see Morgan. Morgan Kenny going to check back in. Folks, he got injured in a warm-up about, what, six, seven games ago? It's been a One of their bit. best defensive players. Good play by Schradel, knocked the ball out of bounds. I really think, though, Carter Nelson's got to be a big key down low and make a presence known. That's where they picked up a lot of fouls on Axtell early if you're a Bulldog fan. And tell you what, if you're Axtell, you need somebody to start lighting it up outside of Lindau. He does lead his team with 17 points here. Nice little crossover. He'll kick this one out, Bergstrom. Shot blocked by Nelson. But right out into the hands of Lindau for the rebound. He fires a three, no good. Rebound, Nelson. Quickly ahead to McNally. Layup up and good, Ainsworth up by five. 35-30, Ainsworth on a 5 nothing run, has their biggest lead of the game. Both teams have had a five-point lead, 4.05 to go 
in the third quarter. You can see some guys with hands on knees now. The ball's thrown away by McNally. McNally, layup, up, good. And Angels has a seven point lead, 37 to 30. And you can hear the Angelworth crowd. Angelworth out to a 9-2 run to start this second half. And we'll take a timeout. 3.53 to go third, full timeout. Third one used by head coach Brent Hendricks. Angelworth 37, Axtel 30. 3.53 to go in the third. Depend on the pros. When it comes to customer satisfaction and fair prices on electrical and heating, ventilation, and air conditioning work, Call on Pro Electric and HVAC of Ainsworth. Trent Kinney, 402-382-5535. Ainsworth Vision Clinic. Dr. Kathy Heinrich serves this area with complete professional eye care. Vision care is available now from 8 a.m. to noon and 1 to 5 p.m. Monday through Thursday at 8 to noon on Friday in Ainsworth with Dr. Kathy Heinrich at Ainsworth Vision Clinic. Call 402-387-1531 for an appointment. We welcome you back to the MAC. Lila McAndrew Gymnasium, Ainsworth, Nebraska. Shane, turnovers have turned into points for Ainsworth as we saw seven turnovers in the first half on Axtell. How many do they have now total? They have nine now, two in this half that I believe both of them have turned to points. Ainsworth has yet to turn the ball over in this quarter. One foul on Ainsworth this quarter, none on Axtell. After that first quarter where we had nine fouls, they began to let them play. They have. And this is going to be Cole across the line with it. And there's a foul on McNally. That'll second foul on the Bulldog trying to go through a screen. That'll be the second foul on McNally. They just talked about that coming out. I saw him talk to the official talking about that exact play that was going to happen there and watch for that extracurricular activity. Foul on McNally, his second. Woo, Logan Schradle just took a big old... Shoulder to the chest. Here's a three. Lindau. No good. Rebound. Going to go off and out of bounds. We're going to see Kaysen Harson have Ronick check back in. Five Four. points off the bench and the only bench points we had in the ball game, I believe, Shane. It is. Ainsworth only four guys have scored. How about for Axtell? Looks like four guys there. <laughs> I was going to say. Nope, five. Five. Here's Appelt up off the glass. No good. Ball going to go into the hands of Morgan. He brings it quickly ahead. Shot up and a foul on Logan Schradle again. Got to stand your ground. Foul. You got to stand there and take it if you're going to stand there. Yeah. That's going to send Lind out to the line. He's 2-2 two two in the first half. If you stand there, plant your feet. Instead of roll with the guy, you get the charge. But to the free throw line goes Carson. He's 2-2 two two at the line. This one is no good. He has 17 in the game. 17 of their 30. <laughs> and Shane, they have a two-pointer by him. And that is it here in the third quarter with 3.13 to go in the third. He's trying to stop a little run put on by the Bulldogs. And this one, no good. Rebound is going to be out of play off of Minden. Good hustle there. I think one thing that Carson Lindau has found out is that Ainsworth has a guy that typically starts. Tonight he came off of the bench and he throws some defense at you like nobody else can do. Right. And Morgan Kinney. Ainsworth can get it in the hands of Kinney. Ooh, about rolled that ankle again. Going to look for a trap here. And Ainsworth gets it across. Going to kick it in the corner to Nelson. Nelson to McNally. Now out to Appelt. Corner three on the way. Big West Plains Bank three-pointer. Appelt's first points of the third quarter, given seven, and Andrews up by ten. Appelt had a two earlier in the okay, quarter. Okay, gotcha. The three to answer back, Lindell. You got to play defense at him. He has 20 in the game. How about that? That'll stop a little run put on by the Bulldogs. Here's Appelt. He won't take the corner three now. 40 to 33. 2.24 to go here. Get it down to Appelt, off to Schradle. Reverse layup, up and good. Nice. Logan Schradle into the scoring column. Nice give and go on the Bulldogs there, good look. 2.12 to go in the third. Ainsworth up 42, 33. They're gonna get McNally pushing through that screen. That'll be his third foul. Yeah, I don't know about that. No, there's a whole lot of. There's a lot of contact underneath the hoop that doesn't get called. That doesn't get called. That's why he said above the arc, it's crazy. 99% of those get called. 
Under the hoop, not many. Lindau, shot, up off the glass, <laughs> and good. 22 in the game for the six-foot senior. 42-35. Dogs up by seven. Schradle looking, looking. Back up top, McNally under minute 50 to go here. Get it down to Nelson, looking for a cutter, nobody. He'll turn around, left-handed shot, no good. Tough shot, and a rebound going to be pulled down by Morgan. And a poke shot. Picked up by, okay, here's Havronic for three. He got it. In his dad's own gym, old gymnasium, Havronic has eight. And Axtell back to within four, minute 42, 20 to go. 38, his dad was a star. I remember him back in the day, I was coaching back then, Eric Havronic. And he has eight off the bench. Big, big difference bench points. McNally to Schradle, to Appel. Appel looks in, and another yep. offensive foul. Another Lowered the shoulder again. That's going to be his second foul. Both of them come off a charge, and another turnover. Another turnover. The first turnover of the second half for the Bulldogs. We'll take a timeout with 101 to go in the third. Ainsworth uses their first timeout of the game. 42-38, Ainsworth. Farm Bureau Financial Services of Ainsworth offers you auto, home, and life insurance, annuities, and IRAs. Contact Angie Davis. Farm Bureau Financial Services, located on Main Street in Ainsworth. VR Wireless is your one-stop shopping destination for all of your communication needs. Whether you're looking for cell phone, accessories, home internet service, or home phone service, VR has you covered with the lowest rates and the best coverage in the industry. Stop on down at our store corner of Highway 20 in Maine and Ainsworth. VR Wireless, we are where you are. At Girl Vantage, we know high performance when we see it. It's not just agronomics and hybrid stuff. It's making every farm and every farmer more successful. For your Pioneer Hybrid Seed, water management services, and crop consultation, go with Grove Vantage, just east of Ainsworth. Welcome back to the Mac Lila McAndrew Gymnasium. Axel put on an 8-2 run after they trailed 40-30. to Now back to within 42-38. And again, Shane, it's, uh, as we mentioned, pretty obvious that Appel picks up his second charge call of the night that uh, you lower the shoulder, it's yeah. going to get caught. I mean, it's... And it you, should. I mean, you, that's, you, yeah, definitely. that's the rule. Yeah, I understand. I'm not, I'm not arguing again. I'm just saying, now you should know. That's the second time. Axtell. A three-pointer away from getting this back to a one-possession game. Lindell with it. Just dribbling up at top. He'll fire a long three. He's feeling it. Man. Give him 25 in the game. Awkward, awkward looking shot. Looks like he shoots it from the hip, but guess what? It goes in. Nelson, triple team. Got to get the ball down low. I'd like Appelt's to see him get got down low. a big low. mismatch down yeah. there a lot. I'd like to see Appelt and Nelson right now just go down low and use their size. There's Appelt, there. got in there underneath and got the two. Got Appelt playing against Bergstrom, that's a 5'9 junior down 13 there. 13 seconds to go. Ball nearly turned over. Appelt now has an 11th point of the game. There's that speed and quickness of Morgan Kinney out there getting that ball knocked away. 44-41. Got to face guard Lindau. You can't even give him any space. Seven seconds to go. Have Ronick. Oh, double dribble. Yes, he got it. Darn it. He wanted to go with the handoff. The defense was there. I believe there's a lot of time. I think they're looking to see if there should be any more time on the clock. I think I don't think so. No. I don't know. People on the video would be able to tell us. I don't think you add anything on. That's what they're talking about. 2.7. That's good. Coach Brent Heinrich Maybe? over here. Pat Nelson on the back talking to him a little bit. Giving him a little encouragement. Yeah. We'll see. They are going to put some time back on this clock. Four seconds exactly. So Andrew to get the basketball, four seconds going to the third, up three, 44-41. Get it to Nelson. Nelson fires a three, no good. And we end the third quarter of play in a tight one in Ainsworth, Nebraska, the D-1-6 district final title and the right for one of these teams to get back to the state basketball championships for the first time since 2016. 
and Adrian leads it 44-41 on our Tri-County Bank scoreboard. Stretch your hay supply with Brad Fox Grinding. Grinding hay is one of the most efficient ways to feed hay or other forages to livestock. Brad Fox provides on-site forage and grain grinding service to those who wish to make the most efficient, economical use of their available feedstuffs. Call Brad Fox today to schedule a time to stop and grind. For reliable, dependable hay grinding service, call on Brad Fox Grinding of O'Neill. Phone 402-340-4038. Well, Shane, we put eight minutes on the clock, head into the fourth quarter of play, been treated to a dandy here on KBRB FM 92.7, the web, kbrb.net, and on the school's YouTube channel. Winner goes to Lincoln. Shane, Andrew wins. We're in Lincoln, March 7th. Axtell wins. We're off for six months. <laughs> eight <laughs> minutes, a three-point lead. Man, there's nothing... This game just will be tied right now. Biggest lead of the game was Ainsworth, 40 to 30. A 10 point lead, Axel's biggest lead has been five. Again, free throws, if it comes down to it, both teams kind of struggle from the line. Zone extended here in a one, two, two. Nelson looks to drive in, he stopped, gets it to Schradle. Back over to Jacob Hell, to Nelson, he's triple team. Gets it to McNally, oh. fouled as he makes it. He can hang so high in the air and for so long. If this is on, nope, this is going to go on Bergstrom, going to be his second. 21 points in the game for Max gets good. They're trying to get Carter in there because it's one free throw. McNally, this is his first trip to the line tonight. The first trip for Ainsworth this half. Carson Lindau leads all scores with five made threes on his way to 25 points. 22 in the game now for Tragen McNally, also his senior. And Ainsworth leads it 47-41 on an old-fashioned three-point play. Bergstrom driving in. He's shut down by Nelson, looking for a cutter. There's a foul on That'll be on Tradle. Tradle. And just a little teaching point to Logan. If he wa goes back and watches a review of this one, you, you know what? The foul's called on you. You can't dwell on it. Nope, you got to You got to go and play. It. Your key is to guard... The that's guy that's making all the threes, and there you go. Logan with the steal. That is a third foul on Tradle. So for Ainsworth, you got three on McNally, Held, and Tradle, two on Apple. Ainsworth with the basketball over to Nelson. 7.06 to go here in the final period. Playing catch up top are the Bulldogs. Looking for a backdoor cut, maybe. Get it to Nelson. And there's Held. He won't take it. He'll dribble out of traffic. Get it off to Schradle. Now back to McNally. McNally looking for Appel. He'll play catch up top with a six point lead. Haven't seen this out of Ainsworth all year. I think Ainsworth still needs to be looking for a basket. Just they take do. a good look. They'll fire a three left side. McNally buries the West Plains Bank three. He now matches Lindau with 25 apiece. Andrews back to up with it, up by nine. Here's a deep three <laughs> to answer. Yes, Irene. How about that? I said he gets across half court. Green light him. We're going to get Morgan Kinney come back in. I bet he comes in what to play defense shot. on Lindau. Andrews went up by nine, now back to six. What a shot. Here's a pass down low to Appel. Cutting McNally from the free throw line. In and out, no good. Rebound. And there's an offensive foul taken by Carter Nelson on a rebound. That foul, I believe that is four on Halverson. That's tough. Very tough. I didn't see it. I did see Nelson laying well, Nelson on the was planted. In, it, it, in my mind, it was a charge. But also in my mind, he didn't know Nelson was there when he turned around. Uh, that's one of those things you ever, you know, where most people travel. This ball by Kinney into the hands of Axtell. Turnover and a chance here for Axtell. And there's a blocking that's foul. Five. That's five on a hooking foul. And yep. that is the right Stuck call there. I did see that one. Tripped him. And Coach Heinrichs is not even going to question it. He saw it. That's going to be Halverson fouling out with 5.49 to go in the game. He had five rebounds to go along with two points. And that's what, go ahead. Keaton Cole checks into the game. And that's what I like about coaches that, you know what, you can't take the foul off the board. 
Now you got to coach your team. He didn't question it. Happened right in front of him. Now Andrews up by six. Looks like they're going to go to a man-to-man -man defense now as Axtell. Get off to Morgan Kenny over to Jacob Held. Held looks to drive. Oh, he's tripped intentionally, too. And that's going to be Whoa. Bergstrom. I mean, he got him with the body, which was a foul, but then he stuck a foot out to trip him. Yeah. That's yeah, and the he, they're great sportsmanship right there. Did you see Bergstrom? He I went over to him, said, hey, sorry, man. I was just trying to go for the steal. Didn't mean to get the – that's awesome Good when deal. you do that. That is his third foul, though, and four team fouls for Axtell. Edwards lost the ball on the inbounds play. There's a got to be a foul on Edwards. Oh, that should it's have been a, be a foul jump on ball. Held as he yeah. goes in there and sits on Morgan, trying <laughs> to get to the ball. I tell you what, I played basketball at Edwards. I coached at Edwards. I have kids that played at Edwards, and I'll tell you, I try not to be partial. And as you just heard it there, I swore that that looked like a foul on Edwards. It should have been. 50 to 44, 5:25 to go on the fourth. Jump ball went to Axtell. Shot up. It's good. By Lindau, give him 30 in the game. He come in averaging about 17 a game, I believe, Shane. And man, is he lighting it up. Please Actually please. averaging 14 a game. It's a four point game. Well, Travel by McNally. Yep. Yes, good defense by Axtell. That's, you see that a lot when a team is trying to just waste time and waste time, you'll get turnover after turnover. Now Ainsworth. Only a four-point lead with 5.01 to go in this game. Under five to go. Linda now guarded here by Morgan Kenny. His shot up off the glass. No good. Rebound Carter Nelson with a big rebound. Only his fourth rebound tonight. I'd really like to see them get this ball in the hands of McNally and then Carter go down low and post up. Now going to have a big mismatch. He's got pass down low by McNally. It's going to be knocked out of bounds. I like that play, though. Get it I down like, low. I like the play. Nelson. You just yeah. got to have a better pass. You got to have a better pass. You got Nelson playing against the <laughs> six foot. They're trying to get four. some tall guy to go out there and grab the net. The official says, I can't get it. There we go. Hey, thank you, Toby Stepanek, 6'1 senior. Andrew with the inbound. Four and a half to go in a 50 to 46 ball game. Pass down low to Nelson over his hands. They're going to call a push in the back. And that's going to be four on Bergstrom. And send Nelson to the line for two. That's five fouls already. Wow. Yes. I wasn't even watching that, Shane. I got caught up watching the game. Nelson is 2-2 two, two, both in the first half. We talked about how important free throws are. This free throw is no good by Nelson. He has four points in the basketball game. That is it, all in the first half. Been playing, hasn't got down low as much as he has in the last few games. This one is good. He has his first points of the second half, give him five. Andrews up five, 51, 46, 420 to go here in this fourth quarter. Have Ronick to Lindau. He's trying to create I'm not too sure if I don't let him shoot behind half court. <laughs> Ball going to be poked away by McNally. And stolen away by Ainsworth with a five-point lead. They miss Nelson wide open. Nelson looks to drive in. Reverse. He got it and he's fouled. Oh, oh my. The number bucket went in. Yep. So that's the seventh point for Nelson. They missed him early open. This foul is going to go on Morgan. It's going to be his third. So we got foul trouble rolling around. And an and one opportunity for Nelson. The lead is seven with 3.55 to go in the fourth. Nelson just went one of two, a possession or two ago. Axtell led basically the whole first half. They trailed 2 nothing, and then Andrew tied it up at 28 at the end of the half. Free throw by Nelson is up and good. He now has eight in the game, 54, 46, Andworth by eight, 350 to go here. Another three, no good, rebound pulled down by Appel, and Bergstrom can't, a guy that's short, Shane, 
does a great job rebounding, but he can't really go for a rebound because he has four fouls. He can't get carried away out there. Don't want to see him get fouled out. Andrews looking like going to try holding on to the basketball until Appel takes it to the hoop layup up and good. And it's a 10-point game, 56-46. 3.26 to go here. Andrews only has one foul. Good defense played here by the Bulldogs. Here's a long two up and no good. Rebound by Nelson. And a foul. Bergstrom just fouled out. Uh, Grabbed the arm of Carter Nelson. I Accidentally. He wasn't even trying to. I saw him getting in there. Yeah. I looked down to write the rebound down, but that's going to be his fifth foul. Dang it. Shane, he's only going to have four points in the game, but thought he did a great job battling here. And that's going to be the second player to foul out for Coach Heinrichs and Axtell. Four points to go along with six rebounds. Brant. Modlin will check in with 3.13 to go in the final period. Nelson at the free throw line to shoot a pair. As it's five fouls on Axtell, Nelson has nine. Logan Schrader will come back in. I think Morgan Kenny has done a heck of a job playing defense on Lindau. Thanks to the multiple texts on the call, enjoying it. Nelson, 10th point of the game. Six Where's of those coming from number the free throw line. three? If you're a team in a black jersey, you have to find number three. He's leading you with 30 points and can shoot from anywhere. They'll go down low the big. big Morgan, there. shot up off the glass, no good. Rebound underneath. Shot up, Appel fouled him, and oh, it won't go. Modlin right off the bench and goes to work. Good take on the rebound. That's going to be the third foul on Appel. Modlin went 0 2 from the line in the first half. Again, we do apologize. We're probably a couple seconds ahead of the video stream. Modlin looks good. Oh, just short. Just off the front of the rim. I think he's 0 for 3, Shane. He is. And he is looking for his first point of the basketball game. 2.56 to go in this one. Ainsworth up by 12. This one banks in. 58-47 with 2.56 to go. Andrews has had her biggest lead at 12. Appel tried going through a double team, and then we're going to have a foul on Andrews. Probably saved a layup, but going through the double team. And this is kind of where Andrews this struggles down the end instead of maybe getting it to your guard. It's going to be Appel picks, picking, picking up his up. fourth foul. Yeah. Andrews, one more foul to give before they send Axel to the line for two on every foul. Yeah. Andrews already shooting. Two fouls. Two fouls. Yeah, yeah. one more to give. One more to give, do. yeah. Clock at 2.43 to go in this one, 58-47. Andrews' biggest lead had been 12 at 58-46. Ball thrown away by Nelson. Andrews has in hands of Nelson underneath. Timeout. Oh. Oh. Andrews had a look wide open underneath the straddle. Coach Jake Nelson says, you know what? That's fine. I want to take a timeout. He'll use one of his final four timeouts. 2.31 to go in this one. The D-1-6 district final. For the right to play March 7th in Lincoln, Nebraska, for the first time since 2016 for both teams. Ainsworth, 58, Axtell, 47. Back to the MAC right after this. Get your game on at Palmer Embroidery and Boutique. You can get your Bulldog gear here. Not just for students, we have all fans covered, including parents and grandparents. Bulldog pride? It's kind of a really big deal at your locally owned hometown boutique on Main Street in Ainsworth. Put your project in good hands with Sean Furno Construction, offering complete general contracting services. Home rentals, window installs, siding, roofing, decks, new builds, you name it. Call on Sean Furno Construction at 402-382-8093. Well, welcome back here. Lila McAndrew, Jim Daisy, 231 to go in this fourth quarter. Andrews up by 11, 58-47. Shane, I like what they just said. Whichever team wins, please do not storm the court. I was watching Wake Forest, who upset Duke today, and one of the star players in college basketball, Filipkowski, uh, took a shot that looked like into his knee on the storm of the court, and he got uh, maybe injured. I haven't looked at my phone to see how he's doing, but yeah, I don't want to do that. All right, Ainsworth has the basketball underneath their own hoop here. They're going to set it up in the hands of McNally here. Looking for a screen. Going to get it back up. Nelson has it, top of the key. Nelson no count on. Out. He'll look to drive. And then he'll dribble out of traffic. Gets it to McNally. McNally to Nelson. 
Two-handed <laughs> slam and he's fouled. Monster dunk. That is your... This foul's gonna go on. Nebraska Bob tied in. Some of those that may have booed him this year will be cheering him on when he's scoring touchdowns in the future for the uh, Big Red. 60 to 47, Nelson, big second half, give him a dozen points in the game. This free throw, in and out, back in, give him 13. Shane, I said they need to find Nelson, what, back midway third, because he only had four points in the game, he and did. now he's answered back. 2.04 to go here in this fourth quarter. Axtell with the basketball. Shot over Nelson, and he's going to be fouled. Yep. Good job, good sportsmanship. Carter goes over there and picks up number 10, Keaton Cole. And Cole is looking for his first points of the basketball game. Cole averages eight points, five rebounds a game. Carter picks up only his second foul. Under two to go here. This free throw is good. Keaton gets his first point for the six foot senior. If you take a look at that one, Shane, if that one is not a foul, clock still winding down. This free throw on its way, no good. Rebound going to be pulled down by Nelson. Probably going to see a little bit of pressure here. 61-48, minute 50 to go here. Appel underneath, gets a little deep, gets it to Held. They'll set it back up. Get it to McNally. Andrew just going to try draining some clock here. <laughs> McNally is going to be fouled. That's going to be the second one on Lindau, but it's going to send McNally to the line for Here, two. Here's the deal. If he doesn't, McNally's probably got a 99.9% .9 chance of making that layup. Yep. Just reached out there, kind of caught him with the arm. McNally, one of one from the free throw line so far tonight. This free throw, no good. McNally, 25 of the game. Carson Lindau, 30. The other night, we were here, Shane. Niber Verdigree saw it sent Jocelyn Miller, who's playing at Hastings College next year in here, broke the girls. McKenzie Gymnasium record with 39. Good by McNally, his 26th point of the game. Driving in is Cole. Minute and a half to go. Cole trap, gonna go down low to Maudlin. He'll kick it out for three for Morgan, and it's good. Ethan Morgan, and a timeout gonna be called by head coach Brent Heinrichs. It'll be a full timeout. This lead's still not safe if you're a Bulldog fan. Angels lead 62-51, a minute 20 to go. And we'll take a timeout with a minute 20 to go in this one. As Shea mentioned, Angels up 62-51. Healthy cattle are the foundation of a healthy food supply. Consistent growth has allowed B-Jop Feedlots to build trust with their customers, providing them with the ease of knowing their cattle are in great hands. Let B-Jop Feedlots of Ainsworth guide you in your cattle feeding and agricultural endeavors. Making car shopping fun again. Whether you're in the market for brand new or pre-owned, shop the great selection at William Crowder Company, where service is a family tradition. See them at 305 West Douglas in O'Neill, or you can find them on Facebook and CrowderAuto.com. All right, a minute 20 to go in this one. Shane in the D-1-6. Somebody's going to Lincoln, Nebraska, March 7th. Will it be? The hometown Ainsworth Bulldogs or the visiting Axe Tell Wildcats are going to bring a press out of that timeout. Well, I'm uh, going no matter what because I'm going to go watch some Well, it must be nice. I have a days. job. <laughs> yeah. Bucket was good. Held can move. They're going to be looking to McNally. Appel to McNally across the timeline. McNally gets a little deep, kicks it out to Held. Ainsworth will reset here in an 11-point game. McNally. McNally got, oh, he got deep. Got bailed out on a foul. That might have been a turnover. That's going to be the third foul on Lindau, but it's going to send McNally back to the line for a pair. Boy, Carson, what a game. Six-foot senior, 30 points. I have him making six threes. This free throw is good for McNally, his 27th point of the game. That puts it to a 12-point game with exactly one minute to go here in this fourth quarter. Next one up, and it is good. That makes it a 13-point lead for Ainsworth, their biggest of the game, 64-51. Pass down low. Up and good for the layup. Cole has his third point. 64-53, and a foul going to be called again on Carson. McNally back to the line. 
running out of room to write down free throws here. That's going to be the fourth foul on Lindau. 48.4 ticks on the clock, 11 point lead. McNally back to the line to shoot a pair. This one is good. Talk Shane, about I don't know what I missed here, but he has 33 points in the game. McNally? That's what they have him on the board for. I'm we'll check it here in a moment. Be close if not. I'm busy calling the game, but it's 66 53. Here's a deep three by Cole, no good. Rebound, Appelt with 40 seconds to go. And we're going to have a foul called. Andrew still does have three timeouts. I believe this foul is going to go on Morgan. It'll be his fourth. Yep. I think Andrew is going to pull back the rebounders. Appelt to the line. He went 2-2 two two in the first half. This is his first trip in the second half. We talked about how big case and have Ronnie coming off the bench was eight points for Axel, but how about welcoming back Morgan Kenny, who was a starter all year long until he got injured in a warm-up as Appelt misses this one, and he comes in and plays some lockdown D tonight. He did. He came in, and for the time he was in there, did a really good job shutting Lindau down. This one is good for Appelt. He's in double figures with the double-double, 14 points tonight. Ball loose, 32 seconds to go. Andrew has 67, 53 leads, rebound no good. Or excuse me, the shot no good, rebound pulled down by McNally. Andrick going to hold on to the basketball. Pack and your bags, ladies and gentlemen, we're gonna, going to Lincoln. Going to be your D-1-6 district final champion. Andrick will go back to the state basketball championship for the first time since 2016 with a 67 53 win over Axtell, but not before a great dogfight here at McAndrew Gymnasium. 67 53, Ainsworth, your final. Back with our stats right after this. Your go to choice for ag and industrial steel work is Winters Millwright in Ainsworth. Evan Winters has over two decades of experience and an expert team who are proud to offer construction, machinery installation, maintenance, repairs, and innovative solutions. Got Residuo with Soother Steam, a second generation nutrition first company that truly cares if you're successful. With our products from everything from mineral to cube, custom feed, consultation, effort development program, seed stock supplier program, we can do it all. That's Scott Rizitschka with Soother Feeds, 402-358-2083. Quality Construction, Pozell Construction of Long Pine, a family-owned business specializing in all forms of general contracting. They're your local dealer for Pella Windows. Matt and Jess Pozell, call 402-273-2929. Sand Hills Animal Health Care Center of Ainsworth, Dr. Cherie Stephen, for all your animal health care, large to small animals and family pets. Call Dr. Cherie Stephen at Sand Hills Animal Health Care Center, located one mile east and a half mile south of Ainsworth. Doing what's right yesterday, today, and tomorrow. Investing in our local communities is not a one and done project. At GJW LLC and Sand Hills Elite Genetics, they take their responsibility to produce safe food seriously, doing their best for people, pigs, and producers. When it comes to health care, the providers at Ainsworth Family Clinic set a standard in quality that aims to exceed your expectations. Dr. Kenneth Wassman and nurse practitioner Jennifer Schirmeyer and Hillary Goodwin. Better never stops at the Ainsworth Family Clinic. Madison's Great Western serves all your fertilizer, fuel, and propane needs. Give them a call or stop by their office west of Ainsworth. Visit with Bob Maxwell. You'll find Madison's Great Western makes your fertilizer and fuel needs their number one priority. What a battle this one was today. Axtell led 17-15 after one quarter play. As we take a look at our Tri-County Bank end of the game summary. Andrew then outscores Axtell 13-11 of the second to lead and have it tied 28-28. Ainsworth then puts up 16 points in the third. Axtell gets 13. Ainsworth leads it 44-43. And then Ainsworth will outscore Axtell 20 Three to 12 in the fourth and win it 67 53. And the Bulldogs are heading to Lincoln, and Shane will have your end of the game stats when we return. Ainsworth wins it 
67-53. When you need expert electrical service, call on Travis Electric of Ainsworth. Travis Electric provides installation, repair, rewiring, maintenance, and upgrades for residential, commercial, farm, and ranch applications. Timely, reliable, professional, and courteous service, Travis Electric at 402-382-3280. This is Carrie Hess with Sylvia's Insurance Group. Livestock Risk Protection, or LRP, is a federally subsidized insurance product that protects against the decline in price over an insurance period for fed cattle, feeder cattle, swine. To learn more, call me at 402-340-0567. William Crowder Lumber Company of Ainsworth, Bassett, Stewart, Atkinson, O'Neill, Spencer, and Gregory supply all of your building needs from the tiniest finishing nail to truckloads of lumber. William Crowder Company, where service is a family tradition. There's no one-size-fits-all when it comes to planning for your future. Peterson Asset Protection Group understands that your financial goals are unique and your needs are going to change in varying stages of your life. Peterson Asset Protection Group can help you tailor a financial plan that meets your unique needs. Maintain and enhance a beautiful lawn with Paulson's Lawn Service of Ainsworth. Jerry and Norma Paulson, mowing, lawn cleanup, power raking, aerating, fertilizing, and spraying. They provide free estimates, references gladly given, Paulson's Lawn Service of Ainsworth. At West Plains Bank, we're proud to offer the financial products and services to help you accomplish your life goals. West Plains Bank and Ainsworth and Springview, a better way to bank. Member FDIC, Equal Housing Lender. Well, let's get ready to take a look at end of the game stats. Here's Shane Kinnick for you. All right, Cody, here's what I got at the end of this ball game. Heck of a ball game it was. Ainsworth turned the ball over eight times in the first half, only five in the second, give them 13 for the game. For Axtell, they went seven in the first, seven in the second, give them 14 in the game. Rebounding wise, Axtell went 17 in the first, nine in the second for 26. Ainsworth went 14 in the first, 11 in the second for 25. The free throw line, I talk about it time and time again for the last however many years you guys have been listening to me, you've heard it. Free throws, Ainsworth goes four of five in the first half, 12 of 15 in the second, give them 16 of 20 in the game. Axtell goes four of eight in the first, two of six in the second for six of 14. Down the list we go, great night for Carson Lindau. I think he said he averaged 14 points a game coming into tonight. Tonight he had 30 points, went two of four from the line, two rebounds. Keaton Cole, one point, went one of two from the line, two rebounds. Kaysen Havronic off the bench, great night for him, eight points, three rebounds. Elijah Bergstrom goes, gets four points, two of four from the line, six rebounds. Brant Maudlin off the bench, three points, one of four from the line, two rebounds. Ethan Morgan, five points, five rebounds. Jacob Halverson, he had two points, five rebounds. Brent Sint, one rebound. We did have Jacob Halverson fouling out of the game with 5.49 to go, and Elijah Bergstrom fouling out with 3.13 to go. For Ainsworth, Tragen McNally had a great game. 31 points, goes six of seven from the line, four rebounds. Jacob Held, four points, two rebounds. Logan Schradle, two points, two rebounds. Carter Nelson, 13 points, goes seven of eight from the line. If you do the math on that, he only had six points from the floor, seven of them from the free throw line to go along with eight or six rebounds. Trey Appelt, 14 points, three of five from the line, 11 rebounds. All right, thank you, Shane, with those stats here. We're gonna get ready to hand over before we talk to a couple of the seniors here. We're gonna welcome in head coach Jake Nelson and goal number one, goal number two, and now goal number three has probably been hit. Coach, congratulations getting back to the state tournament. First time since 2016, how's it feel? Oh, it feels awesome. This will be my first time as a head coach down there, so really looking forward to it. And you lost your voice. Yes, I did. <laughs> coach, talk a little bit about it. Uh, you have, uh, we can't tell, express enough about the three players you have, and they stepped it up big. Trey McNally, what'd you have him with tonight, Shane? How many? 31 points in the basketball game is what we had him. They had him for more than that on the on the board. Uh, Carter and Trey, uh, exceptional. Carter just short of a double-double. Trey, another double-double. Uh, just tell us about what these three kids have done in your basketball coaching career here for the Bulldogs. All these guys have just, you know, they've done everything I've asked to them as far as improving, and, you know, we just keep getting better and better and better. And these guys have put in the work. I've worked with these kids uh, since they were fifth graders. So, you know, it, it's really awesome to see uh, all that work that they put in 
uh, paying off. And hopefully we'll see even more of it here in a couple weeks. And how <laughs> good did it feel to bring in number one off the bench and actually maybe gained a little bit on defense? That, that was great. Morgan Kenny. That was great getting him back out there. You know, it uh, gives us that little extra breather for a little bit extra defense when we need it. <coughs> it was really, really nice to have him. And it, afterwards, I was like, you're back, baby. Let's go. Carson Lindau, I, as soon as he got across half court, he had the green light, and wow, stepped it up at him with 30 tonight. Yeah. Can't say enough about that guard. Oh, kid created, played a great game. I mean, the scout at the board in there says, we'll shoot from anywhere, and he did. He, he shot lights out tonight. Well, Coach, just a great game. Logan Tradle has stepped it up late in the season for you to help fill a little bit of void. Jacob Held is beginning to step back into that role where he was when people really didn't know about him in the first part of the season for you also. Yeah, those guys, uh, they, they've learned their roles and they're playing them very well and they're doing exactly what they need. Uh, Jacob just goes out there and gives us such great effort, uh, rebounds and stuff. Logan gives us such great defense. It's, it's really you know, awesome to see us gelling as a unit together. All right, Coach, we'll let you go enjoy this one. We're going to talk to the three seniors. We'll see you in Lincoln, Nebraska. Thank you. Coach Jake Nelson joining us here on KBRB. I know people are wanting to take some photos and things, and so we'll try to get uh, the three seniors up here. going to talk to them. Uh, big, big keys here, Shane, for the Bulldogs uh, today. Uh, what I saw in the second half was Nelson and Appelt actually getting some things done down low in the game. And Trey McNally, as I've said this before, and I told him, I, he goes, yeah, going to Shadron State, we're going to go ahead and play football. And I'm like, man, you are one of the sweet shooting guards I've seen up and down the highway. I've been doing this for 20-plus years. And tell you what, man, it's, uh, he's a, one of those guys that is just such a, a, a pure shooter, but he only stands it at 5'9". And first time I've seen Carson Lindau and tip of the hat to that six-foot senior also is, is he played very well here uh, tonight, but the Bulldogs, uh, three guys that uh, keyed this one, and I know it takes five, Shane, and I told Coach uh, Nelson uh, and asked him how he felt to get number one back on the defense tonight on the floor. Yeah, Cody, and it had to have been great. I can't ever hear your post-game interviews. But. Yeah, having him come in, uh, was a starter early on, got injured, missed a, uh, quite a few games, come in, defense stepped it up here in the uh, second half. We're going to take a timeout. Shane's going to have your uh, performers of the game when we return. Ainsworth headed back to Lincoln, Nebraska for the first time since 2016. This time in Class D1 as they win over Axtell at home, 67-53. Ainsworth Feed Processing is proud to buy corn from local farmers because the best corn in the nation makes the best pigs in the nation. And when money stays local, it multiplies time and time again, putting our local area first and feeding the world. Allen Monuments of Ainsworth offer permanent legacies that memorialize the passing of a loved one. The monument you choose can be customized to reflect the life of your departed one. Serving you with dignity, Allen Monuments of Ainsworth. You can always brighten your day with a visit to Ainsworth Flowers and Gifts. Unique floral designs available for all occasions, gifts and trending decor, plus a coffee shop with full menu of your old favorites, new concoctions, and special features. If you have a demand for concrete, call on Ainsworth Ready Mix to get your project started. Residential, commercial, or industrial concrete jobs, they're committed to providing quality products at an affordable price at Ainsworth Ready Mix. Proud supporter of Bulldog Athletics. Well, here on KBRB, Shane, you're going to hand out our performers of the game while we get the three seniors up here on the radio broadcast. And let's start off, Axtell Wildcats. All right, Cody. One of them, obviously, is going to Carson Lindau. He played a heck of a game. He ended the night here with 30 points, two of four from the line, two rebounds. And the guy was unstoppable for the most part until he found a little bit of Morgan Kinney. But the other one, you know how I love bench points. I'm giving Kaysen Havrona coming back to his Dad's home gym off the bench with eight points, three rebounds. All right, out for the Bulldogs. Tregum McNally. What first a game. Of all, he just did everything that he needed to. Ended the game. I got him with 31 points, six of seven from the line, four rebounds. And tonight I'm giving the other one to Carter Nelson. I know he doesn't get my recognition a lot because awesome job, he guys. Watch your does head. so good. 
Give him 13 points, seven of eight from the line, six rebounds. All right, your performers of the game brought to you by First Class Auto in Ainsworth. And guys, as I hand this to you, I'm just gonna hand it and you just talk like that for me, but I'm gonna welcome in here three guys that really have uh, been a driving force. If you wanna just hold on to that and talk into there for me. Trey McNally, uh, end of the night. I had him 31 on our card. They had you, I think, 33 or so on the board. But tell us the work you've put in since you've maybe been in fifth grade all the way up here to see you guys now finally reach a goal your senior year. Yeah, it's been a grind. Coming up early in the morning, 6 a.m., get shots up. It's just continuous. Sometimes you get tired of it, but you got to keep pushing to come up, and it all pays off in the end. It'll, you'll get there. Uh, you look like you have ice in your veins every time you pull up. I, I, I told everybody on the broadcast, I thought you were going to go to Shadron State and play basketball. You said football. No change in plans? No, nope, still <laughs> going to stick with football. <laughs> well, congratulations, man. A great job. And, of Thank course, you. you guys are going to be playing on Thursday, March 7th. Tell us now a little bit about the supporting cast. How about the Jacob Helds and the Morgan Kennys and Logan Schradles that kind of helped stepped up and helped you guys to get to this point in your senior year? Yeah, they've especially stepped up on defense, like just knowing their role on offense and then playing hard on the defensive end, crashing the boards. They're, they've stepped up big time when we needed them. All right, congratulations. We'll have you hand Thank that you. microphone yep. over there. Trey Appelt, great game, another double-double. You average a double-double. Talk a little bit about maybe a little bit of a, low, a slow start for you guys tonight, but down the stretch, you guys were able to get things done basically down low. Yeah, we just decided that we wanted to win the game, and we needed to, and we just had to get tough, you know, go in for rebounds and then get putbacks in there, and we just really had to buck up and play our game and just get tough. So. I, I really thought you guys had the size advantage, but they actually did very good going out, boxing out, and being able to jump as high as they could and getting rebounds tonight. Yep, they definitely tried their best. But All right, I'm trying not to jinx you here, okay? Job's not done. First game, Thursday, March 7th, Lincoln, Nebraska. You're checking in about 36 points shy of that 1,000 mark. How would that make you feel if you could join your teammates, Trey McNally, Carter Nelson, in the 1,000-point club this year? I feel like it'd just be a testament to us three boys' hard work that we put in over the years and just show everybody how much work we put in all, all being in the 1,000-point club together. So, Was this goal number four or five, goal number one? I mean, you know it was a goal in yours. First, you got to win a district final or sub-district, you got to get here, first of all. But maybe talk a little bit about... Uh, not not only a goal for the team, but maybe a goal for yourself, Trey. My goal is just to get to that state championship game. It'd be awesome to play in PBA and all the crowd and the atmosphere. I think it'd be great. That's right. my goal. Congratulations. We'll hand that over to Carter here now. Carter Nelson is going to join us here. Carter, you've been uh, a part of this team as well as everybody else. We're not trying to rule this out, but you guys are coming in and you guys put up great numbers, rebounding-wise, points-wise. You guys know each other. Heck, I've seen you throw behind the head passes just knowing that the guy's going to be there for you. Tell us a little bit about how much you rely on these two guys plus the rest of your teammates to get the job done. Oh, 100%. Um, there's often times where I find myself maybe having a little bit of struggle in a game. I struggled tonight, but that's where it came in. These boys come in and they play hard. Uh, it, and that bond isn't made just on the basketball court. We hang out all the time outside of school. We're always trying to do things around the community to help. And I think it's just really important. That's helped build our bond to help us succeed. And like you said earlier, the job's not done yet. So we'll see where that bond goes. You had four points in the first. You had two free throws and a two. I told the listeners about midway through the third, Carter Nelson has to get into this game. And you came out, ended up with the double figures and made your presence known there as well as the rest of your team. Uh, that's all testament to these guys because the looks that I was getting, it was because that they were driving in. And they were such a force today to where my guy would help off and give me an easy shot. I wasn't hitting them close or the mid-range jumpers, so uh, I started to get in a little bit more. And like I said, these guys just took all the attention, and that's exactly what kind of helped me to score points tonight. But it really, it's really nice to have them to be able to do that for me. How too. about when number one came on the floor for the first time in quite a few games and played some defense for you? Morgan Kenny, welcome back in the ball game. That shows his heart. Um, he knew that... He wanted to come back and battle because, once again, he, wanted, he didn't want to come back just to win. He didn't want to come back just to get his playing time. He wanted to come back to go to state. 
and that's kind of been the big message here, and we got to just keep it up. All right. As I said, job's not done. We'll see you guys Thursday, March 7th, Lincoln, Nebraska. Congratulations. Appreciate it. Thank you. All right. Carter Nelson, Tragan McNally, Trey Appel, thank you for your time. Go enjoy it with your family and friends. All right. Good job, fellas. All right. We're going to welcome in for the last time here Shane Kinnick. And I tell you what, Shane, we've been at the state basketball championships. I called a state title back in, what was it, 2007. Seven. And then you and I, when you had a kid playing in a overtime loss in the state championship back in 14, spectators in 16, and now heading back in 2024, and a team that never thinks they're down in a basketball game. Yeah, Cody, and this, this team has been fun to watch, not just this year, but this group of seniors, they've been starting for four years now, and we've just watched them grow as a team and the community getting behind them and following them everywhere, you know. It's just a perfect scenario that they're going to be able to cap off their senior season with at least a trip to Lincoln. You know, the, the thing that I was sitting here thinking about, if the Ainsworth girls, and again, it happens everywhere, if they were 100%, if they weren't battling illness for the last two and three weeks and have somebody get sick uh, last night, leading scorer, leading point guard, they had Elmwood Murdoch down. Uh, number two team in the country, where Ainsworth was that close to getting both teams, I believe for the first time ever at state tournament at the same time. I'm sure it was. As far as I know, I believe the Ainsworth girls have made it there once. 1986, that is correct. I knew it was in the 80s. The boys obviously been there a few more times, do have a couple medals, a championship medal, a couple runners up over the, a lot of years, but this will be great for these kids to get back down there again. We talked about the seniors. We talked about Morgan Kinney. We talked about the Logan Schradles that were stepping up here tonight. But you know what? A lot of love still going out for everybody on this team. And the crowd is super excited when 6'2 senior Mason Titus gets in. He gets a chance to shoot. Or Adolfo Rojas Salazar, the 5'6 sophomore. Uh, this crowd wants everybody in that scoring column. They do. And they get behind every kid on that roster. No matter who it is, they're there for them. They're going to be there for them for the next three games if they get three. Axtell, man, oh, look good. Look so good. Shane, the big quarter, and it came down to free throws basically and why it was at such a big fourth quarter. But Ainsworth outscores Axtell 23-12 to 12 in that fourth quarter to win at 67-53. They did. You talked about free throws. Ainsworth went 12-15 of 15 in the second half. Axtell two of six. Yeah, and it looks like uh, I'm trying to get these stats here. Second half for the Bulldogs. They let's just go combined here. Second half for the Bulldogs. 18 of 36 from twos for 50 percent. Five of 14 for threes. McNally had four of those five for 36 percent. And Ainsworth 16 to 20 from the free throw line. I do not have. Let's see. It doesn't look like we have. Uh, the stats for Axtell. Big thank you to Kevin Martin for the stats. But again, let's tip our hat to Carson Lindau, Keaton Cole, Ethan Morgan, those guys that came in. Brent Sim had to come in because of foul trouble. Those seniors, they also have Toby Stepanek in there and Benjamin Merchant also as seniors here. But those guys gave Ainsworth everything they wanted. They did, Cody. And I still up here with a minute and a half to go. I'm Still thinking to myself, that lead is not safe for the Bulldogs. The <laughs> we way, mentioned that a lot. The way that Axtell plays and the way they can shoot the ball, and not just, I know Lindau had 30 points, but you saw them other guys. Case and Havronic had two threes. Ethan Morgan ha knocked down a three. I mean, they could all shoot the three. I was watching them in warm ups. Morgan, he had a three. I mean, every one of them kids could knock it down from four or five feet behind the line. What an exciting game it is. I will tell you this, knocking on wood for the Bulldogs, Ainsworth has not lost this year to anybody below Class C1. They've, they've, they've had a tough schedule. They are no longer in the Southwest Conference where they have played. So 